All right, what's up, YouTube? Today I woke up and I was watching this YouTube video and I was watching this guy, he was preaching Jesus to these two men. Now these other two men, they believed in different religions. So they believed in the form of Jesus, but they didn't believe in the Jesus of scripture, right? And the point of the video is not about that. It's just, this is what inspired me. I was looking at this and I decided just to scroll down to the comments. In the comments, one comment has said that people have a hard time believing in Jesus' perfect nature because we've never seen perfection. And as I looked at that comment, it just started bringing all this inspiration to make this video. So the first thing I want to talk about is that is the wedding in Cana truly the first miracle of Jesus, right? So is the wedding in Cana truly the first miracle of Jesus? Now, the reason why I say this is because we get into the perfect nature and all of that, but the wedding in Cana, right? They ran out of wine. Jesus turned water into wine. And we say, this is the first miracle they performed, right? Before he went on to his three-year ministry and the various miracles he did then. But this is the first miracle he performed before that, right? <clears throat> but see, I want to talk about the birth of Jesus because in my, um, in my thought, that's the first miracle, right? That's the first miracle that Jesus performed or that was performed through Jesus. So his his hands didn't perform this work, but it was it was performed through him, right? And the reason why I say this is because in the birth of Jesus, he's conceived by a virgin named Mary, right? He's conceived as the Son of God, right? She said, "You shall give forth the Son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us, right? Or you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." So this is to me that's the first miracle, right? Now we see that throughout the Old Testament, his birth was prophesied as the king of Israel, the one true anointed one. The government shall be upon his shoulders, right? The salvation of Israel shall come through this child. So he was prophesied in the Old Testament, right? But I want to get into, because we see that that's in the birth of Jesus, he's conceived by a virgin named Mary as the son of God. His birth is prophesied in the Old Testament, but I want to get into men, right? Because we have to understand the perfect nature, so... We get into the birth of Jesus. Now, let's see what men, right? Let's see how men are born. So Psalms 51 and 5, it says, and this is David speaking. This is after he has the adulterous affair with Bathsheba. And then God um, takes the, the, the child of that adulterous relationship. So Psalms 51 and 5 goes, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. So we hear that scripture, right? Because we talk about, God uh, created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me, renew a steadfast spirit within me. We hear that part, but we don't hear, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. We have to understand what that truly means. We have to understand what this means. And then we get into Romans 3 and 23, where it says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So he says, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. What does this mean? But then also, so Romans 3 and 23 says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So who is all? Who is who is this all that Paul or whoever wrote Romans is referring to? Who is all? And I believe that is the difference between men and Jesus. So this is how we can start to understand the perfect nature of Jesus, because the difference is found in those scriptures. Right. First of all, he's conceived by a virgin named Mary. Right. That's the first thing. He's conceived by a virgin. So that, that's a mysterious, right? Okay, he's conceived by a virgin. We're going to get into that. Okay, David says, I was brought forth in iniquity. So he was born in iniquity and in sin, my mother conceived me. So he wasn't born perfect. He was born in sin. And then Romans 3 and 23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So let's, let's start trying to explain these things. So we are conceived in iniquity, right? According to Psalms 51 and 5, as David said, I was conceived in iniquity and in sin, my mother brought me forth. We are all conceived in iniquity because of the fall, because we know that in the garden, when God created Adam and Eve, they were perfect. They had no sinful nature. He had, he said, of all the trees in this garden, you may freely eat and it will be sustenance to your body. But of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, why he said that? Because in Romans 6 and, th 6 and 23, it says, for, for the wages of sin is death. So all the wages of sin is death. So once we sin, you have to die. So he, that's why he was saying what he said in the garden. So when they were in the garden, they were perfect, right? They were a perfect creation of God. 
there was nothing wrong until the serpent entered in and he tempted them, right? So we're all born in iniquity because of the fall, because when they fail, you have, we now are born into a fallen nature, a corrupted nature, right? So since the fall, all men and all women have a sinful or fallen nature. Now, this is also why we must be born again, right? This is why when John, Jesus, when Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus in John chapter three, verse three, he says, the, the text says, Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So why must we be born again? It's because of the fallen nature, the sinful nature that we are born into. So we are born into a fallen and sinful nature. This is why the proverb says that there are many plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's counsel that will stand because God has a perfect wisdom that we can attain in our sinful nature. He says there are many, you know, um, man, all the ways of man are right in his own heart, but the end thereof is death, right? And this is the same, this is the same explanation. Because in our fallen sinful nature, we think that what we do is right. But we don't actually have the godly wisdom that's able to shine the light on, on what is right and what is wrong. And that's why we need God. That's why we need his wisdom. That's why we need his love, his mercy, right? So getting back to Adam and Eve, we have to remember that Adam and Eve in the garden, before sin had entered, before they ever ate of, ate of the tree, they were born perfect. Because I believe that's Genesis um, chapter 1 and... 30, 28, something like that. They were born perfect. Adam and Eve were born perfect, but they were also given dominion over the whole earth. So God has says, let them have dominion over the birds of the air, the, the, um, the, the life in the sea, right? Any creeping thing that creepeth on the earth and over the plants in the field, right? So he gave them dominion over everything in their perfect nature, right? But then sin entered that world and then perfection could no longer be found. So perfection, because of sin entering the world, it can no longer be found in the earth, nor was it found in humanity, right? So then between this fall of man, between the fall from the perfect nature, because they were perfect first. So between the fall, between this perfect nature and the birth of Jesus, all men and all women are born into this fallen and sinful nature. So we're conceived through iniquity. Right. We are conceived in iniquity through the conditions of our conception. So we're conceived in iniquity because of the way that we were born. That's what I'm saying. So we're born through sex and reproduction. But also, you know, if you know anything about science through sex and reproduction, we pass information down through our reproductive, um, through, our re through our reproduction. And we pass it down in the name of genetics. We call it genes. Right. So our genes carry information. Right. And since the fall, all of humanity's genetic code was now it had corruption inside of it. It was no longer perfectly created by God, because at that point in the garden, God was the only one who had made man. He's the only one who had a say in what man was going to do, how they were going to look and what image they were created in. And so the devil, we gave ourselves over to the devil. Adam and Eve gave themselves over to the enemy. And because of that, his perverse nature now entered into humanity. So now we're made in the image of God, but you have an evil nature that's always coming against you, tempting you, trying you, giving you tribulations to try to get you on the evil path, to get you on that perverse path. So we're conceived in iniquity through the conditions of our conception. Through sexual reproduction, we pass down information in the name of genetics. So since the fall of man, the once perfect human genetic code that God had created has then been corrupted, and therefore we're all born with corruption in our genes. This is why we are tempted. That's why we don't know. We don't get taught how to sin. We just know how to sin from nature. We have to be taught how to be like Jesus. It's like, but hold on, die for somebody else? Why? Why would? Why would I ever die for somebody else? If somebody slapped me on my cheek, why would I turn the other cheek? Why not just fight them? Why not just kill them? You know. This is why we need the law of God. This is why we need the words of God. This is why we need the pure and holy love of God that cannot be replicated by any man because he is perfect. You see, he, he is perfect. This is what Adam and Eve would have been had they resisted the temptation. They would have been perfect. It would have been a perfect nature and none of these things would have ever transpired. But because they did, we have to understand what do these things mean. So 
The reason why we say that Jesus is perfect is because Joseph and Mary, they did not conceive Jesus by sexual reproduction. So I said previously, we're conceived through sexual reproduction, right? None of us are miracle babies. We're conceived through sexual reproduction and our human genetic code is passed down because of our sexual gen genetics. We, we pass down information in our genes that leads to those, those sins because we've all sinned. And because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, how can a sinner but God a perfect person? Right. Only a perfect person can be God, another perfect person. This is why Jesus is so special, because he was begotten. He's begotten the only son of the father, full of grace and truth. He is completely filled with truth, completely filled with perfection as Adam was. But when Jesus was tempted, he never sinned. When Adam was tempted, he did sin. So everybody that comes that descends from Adam has been sinning or they've been um, born in that iniquity, born in that iniquity state. Whereas the things that come from Jesus are born in perfection. And this is why we must be born again, because to be born again is to be made like Jesus, right? To be delivered from our iniquity, that nature of iniquity, and to be imputed the righteousness of God unto us, right? So Joseph and Mary, they did not conceive Jesus by sexual reproduction, but God himself placed Jesus into the womb of Mary, hence the virgin birth. So this is why I think the virgin birth is the first miracle. It's not the wedding in Cana because the wedding in Cana was something that Jesus did by hand, right? He turned um, water into wine, which is cool. But the fact that in an imperfect world full of sin, God decided to give humanity a, another chance by he gave us perfection because we were perfect in the garden. And because of our sinful, because of the temptation, we didn't resist the temptation. We let sin enter into genetic code. And this genetic code was passed down throughout all humanity. Many have died. Many have perished. Many have went to hell because they did not, they did not repent of their sins. Right? So God won redemption for us by giving us perfection in the form of Jesus. He is perfection. He is the living embodiment of perfection. And he never sinned. So when he gave up his body, when he gave up his life as a human sacrifice for us, we can believe on him and now receive the righteousness of God. Let's not let's not forget the book of John. He says in the beginning was God and the word was with God and the word was God. So Jesus is still God. Jesus is still the word of God made flesh. Therefore, this is perfection. So Jesus, his whole being is full of perfection, full of the word of God. He never sinned. He cannot sin. He is wholly apart from sin. And so this when Jesus, when God placed Jesus into the womb of Mary, it's not just that it's you know, that it's a, a baby coming to the earth. It's perfection entering the imperfect world. The world was littered and clouded with sin, clouded in darkness. But the light was shining upon this baby in Bethlehem because he was full of light, full of grace, full of mercy, full of truth, and full of God. He was completely full of God with no sinful nature at all. And this is why we can believe in him and be, be saved, right? So Hebrews 4 and 15, it says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So we just kind of went into that. Jesus was tempted, right? But he never, he didn't have the sinful nature that we have. So he wasn't born in imperfect, in his imperfect, iniquitous nature. So he already had that above us. That was a difference. We were born into iniquity. He was born in perfection. But he was tempted, just as Adam and Eve were tempted. Right. Because they were we talking about two perfect genes. Right. Adam and Eve was the first the first created create creature of God of humanity. So they didn't have a sinful nature until they fell in the garden. So when they were tempted by the devil, they fell. When Jesus was tempted, he rose higher because he never failed. He never did what was wrong in the sight of God. He always made chose the right. He always made the right decision. Right. So he was yet without sin. So this is why we look towards Jesus. OK. So now we get into perfection because perfection is Jesus. So perfection entered this imperfect world and he, like he, the living embodiment of perfection, which is Jesus, he taught us how to overcome our sinful nature because he was tempted yet without sin, according to Hebrews 4 and 15. This is why belief in him saves, right? Because he is the embodiment of perfection and the embodiment of the word of God. Now, the last thing I want to say is that the wedding of Cana was indeed 
the first miracle that Jesus performed, but the birth of Jesus, right? The fact that a virgin gave birth and that preceded this event of the wedding in Cana. And that's just the result of a perfect God restoring perfection to humanity through the virgin birth. His sacrifice is the reason why we can still enjoy your relationship with God. So this is why I say, man, are we sure that the wedding in Cana was the first miracle that Jesus, like, that's the first miracle that he performed, but is that the first miracle that he was a part of? I believe this is an even more powerful miracle because without Jesus, no man will be saved. Without Jesus, all men will be in hell. No man will be able to talk to God. No one will be able to stand before a holy God. Without Jesus, this imperfect world would have been completely entrenched in chaos. Because of his sacrifice, because of the access to men being able to be born again, to worship him in spirit and in truth, this is why we can fight back against the enemy. This is why our weapons are not carnal in nature, but they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. This is why. Because we can be reborn in that perfect nature again. So you see, this is why I say, man, is that really the first miracle? Or is it this? Because this is so much more impactful than just turning water into wine. But hey, what do you think? You know, leave your comments. You know, put your thoughts and concerns in the in the comments. And, you know, I try to get back to as many as possible because I really want to discuss this. You know, if, if anybody has any idea or any thought about that, I really want to discuss that. Um, have a good day.